Welcome back to my channel. So today I have a very, 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 very special guest and this is Mani. If you guys don't already know, this is my first dog ever. She's my biggest baby, the love of my life. And she's just been my best friend for the past, how old are you? 13 years. She's a Westie. She's been my best friend for 13 years. I love her so much. She's just the best. I love her personality. She's a little feisty and a little crazy, but I love her for that. So today I am doing something a little different from usual. I wanted to do this video where I kind of talk about my experiences or like what I've learned as a dog owner and kind of just share some of my tips and also just like my must-haves as a dog mom. Hopefully this will be helpful to any of you who are looking to adopt a dog or maybe you already have a dog and you feel like you just want to know a little bit more so yeah that's what this video is going to be about I hope you guys enjoy it and let's just jump right in so obviously this list of things that I feel like are must-haves are my must-haves it could vary differently between each person and you know depending on what dog you have it's gonna you know vary a lot uh, I only have small medium-sized dogs I've only grown up with small dogs like under 20 pounds um, Michi would be the biggest dog I've ever owned she is about 25 five pounds somewhere there she's like a medium sized um so obviously these things are gonna be catered towards like the smaller dogs but you can just you know tweak it to what fits you and your dog so the first thing i feel like is a must have and if you guys are looking to adopt and actually let me just kind of throw this in there um if you are new to this whole dog or pet world and maybe you have been really wanting a companion animal i highly 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 recommend adopting versus shopping for a dog there are so 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 many dogs that are adoptable out there and um i think a lot of people think that in order for me to get the dog I want, I have to get it through a breeder or I have to buy it from a dog shop or something. But that is so not true. I think that if you just have the patience and you continue your search and not just going to one shelter, you obviously have to check out many, many shelters. You have to look for rescue groups to find your perfect dog. Um, I truly believe that it's out there. And for those of you who maybe want a specific breed, don't get discouraged and don't think that that's impossible because it definitely is. Even if you have allergies, I hear a lot of people say, because I allergies I need to get a purebred dog and I need to get um, a specific breed but you can definitely find that in shelters I've met so many people who found their perfect dog that is purebred and is hypoallergenic from a shelter before so you have to keep searching you have to be very patient it took us like five years before we found Navi um, we would go to different shelters we would always be online and you know it did take many years but in the end it's just so worth it and just know that by adopting you are saving an animal's life um, and that itself is just so so meaningful and building that bond with that animal is so so special so I highly recommend you guys to adopt if you're looking to get a dog and just be very very patient and open-minded uh, sometimes you may go into the shelter thinking I want this specific breed but you may fall in love with a different one you know so be open-minded and good luck with your adoption search so the first thing if you're just now getting a dog and you don't know what to get the first thing you want to get is definitely a collar with tags you want to make sure that if your dog ever got away that there would be some sort of way if someone else found it to contact you and also you can go the extra mile of like microchipping your dog it's really inexpensive and you can do it at any vet office so another thing that i feel like kind of just goes hand in hand with a collar is obviously a leash you want to have a good nice quality leash they're not expensive you can get them at any pet store this one I just got from PetSmart has a nice sturdy buckle on here if you have a dog that is heavier you may want to go for something more heavy duty just in case like the buckle will snap or break I've heard that happen before but since our dogs are really small just a simple one like this works great I recommend that if you are a new dog owner to get a leash that is shorter you don't want your dog to be able to just like wander off you know how there are those leashes that are um, extendable has like the tape and that I feel like is good for for certain occasions but overall I feel like when you have a new dog and you're trying to train it to walk on a leash definitely go with something short this one is about four feet and I like this one because I'm able to keep my dog close and if you want to step your game up your walking dog game up you can get one of these things so this is from easy dog and it's basically a belt so you tie this around your waist so that way you can be hands-free. Like you don't have to worry about your arm being occupied by a leash. Cause sometimes when I'm walking the dogs, I'm like on the phone or something. I just don't want to have like too much going on. So I like to wear this so that I can just strap my dogs 
to my waist and be hands-free. So for the second thing, I feel like it's important for every dog to have a harness. If you have a dog that likes to pull, that's really um, harsh on their throat and that can choke them. So this is what a harness looks like. They all come in, I guess, like different shapes and sizes. This is the one that I absolutely love. I've had like over 10 harnesses throughout all my dogs and this is seriously the best one. This is from Easy Dog. I love their stuff by the way and this is not sponsored but hey if you're over at Easy Dog and you watch and hit a girl up I love you guys <laughs> so yeah I love 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 this harness I actually was introduced to this by Sophie she has it for Leo and she raves about it I'm like all right let me see what this is about and now all my dogs wear this harness I like this because you can just fit it over their head you don't have to do all this stuff like putting it through their arm and like just a lot of material like some harnesses are so thick that when they wear it during the summer I feel like it's just suffocating them and I love that there's this like handle on the back sometimes when money is just like going crazy on another dog I'm able to just hold this and pull her back so this is really handy make sure you get a harness to prevent your dog from choking when you are walking them the next item is a no-brainer and if you are just now getting into uh, I guess like walking your dog taking your dog out to the public um, make sure you have poopy bags dog poop can transmit diseases it's nasty it stank and it's just rude to leave your dog poop like on someone else's front yard you know so just always make sure that you have a poopy bag the next one is some sort of like collapsible uh collapsible am i saying that right water bowl i love this i got it from amazon very inexpensive i think it was like about six dollars for two and this is bpa free uh, it also has like this little hook right here so i can attach it to like my leash i really like having these because i find that my dogs always get thirsty when i take them out especially if you take them out to go hiking like they just get real thirsty and it's nice that these just collapse and you can just travel with them you slip it in your purse or your backpack this way it allows you to always have water available for your dog so next thing would be flea medication i don't have any with me right now i just ordered some new ones because we're completely out but the ones i give my dog is trifexis trifexis is pretty expensive i will say but i like it because it comes with everything um i think it prevents like heartworm fleas and ticks and a whole bunch of other things it's kind of like the all-in-one flea medication so i like to give that one to the dogs it's a pill when money was younger i would always just get her like the over-the-counter flea medication and i would drop it onto the back of her neck and i find that she would always still get fleas with those and with trifexis i've been giving it to her ever since she was like five years old and never ever had a flea ever since then it's expensive you get it through your vet it's like twenty dollar a pill so do your research on flea medication it's definitely a must and the next one would be getting high quality food and treats for your dogs so this one i feel like i don't really want to recommend you guys anything i'd rather you guys just go and do your own research because everyone is different and everyone wants to feed their dog a different diet but my main thing when it comes to shopping for like food for my dogs i always make sure that the ingredients in the bag show that it's wholesome ingredients you don't want to get something that is just like filled with fillers such as corn you want to make sure that the ingredients usually start with or should always start with a protein such as chicken or like beef uh, fish nowadays I love going to local pet shops that only source quality food for the dogs you can always check out pet food express I love pet food express because it's really accessible they're kind of everywhere and I just find that people at pet food express are always really really knowledgeable about their products versus like a pet co or a pet smart not that they're bad or anything but I find that people in pet food express seem to know a little more they're a little more experienced so if you're looking for like a good dog food and you're confused I would definitely check out pet food express or just like your local pet shops the next thing that I would recommend is not something that I use a lot and I'm so glad that I don't ever but I just like to have it in my house so it is the styptic powder this is basically a powder that helps stop bleeding and it's not for things like uh, if your dog got bit by something um, and they're bleeding like crazy this is not something you want to use this is more meant for if your dog got like a cut or a scrape or maybe you were trimming their nails at home and you know you just cut a little too deep and you need to stop the bleeding um, this is great alright so the next thing you probably saw it on my dog's harness this is is also a thing that I feel like is optional it just depends on like your lifestyle and what you do with your dog so this is a whistle dog tracker you can find it on Amazon I actually got this because I was working with them a few months ago on this campaign and I just really really like it if you're someone that maybe leaves your dog outside in the yard or maybe you have a dog that's really really good at sneaking out this is just kind of like a peace of mind it's basically just like a GPS tracker for your dogs money and Michi are getting like a little overweight so I need to track like their activity level to see if they're getting like the amount of exercise 
exercise they need per day. So it also does that too. It is a little bulky, but it's really light. So I don't think it bothers them at all. All right, so the next thing would be dog beds. I love, I love, I love shopping for dog beds for my dogs because I'm someone that really values sleep and I just want to always like have a good night's sleep and I want the same for my dogs and I find that when they have a comfortable bed they will kind of stay off of my things. With raising my dogs I like to set boundaries for them because um, I learned this from a trainer that it's good to have boundaries. It's good for your dog to know what is your space and what is their space. For training purposes I just feel like it's good to have that separation so that's why I make sure my dogs are very comfortable in their bed so that they don't feel like they have to come up on mine to be comfortable. Also, if you have an older dog, you just want to make sure that their joints are supported and that they're getting a good night's sleep. A good dog bed is crucial and they're not expensive at all. You can go to Amazon and look up like, I don't know, orthopedic or like memory foam mattress bed for dogs and you can get them for like $30. So my last must have would be toys and bones to keep your dog entertained. So I have toys like this that my dogs really like. They're smaller so they don't care to have like a big tough toy. They just like things that make noises like this. You like it? <laughs> and they like things with like a rope. They just like chewing on toys. They also love the squeaky. So you just want to make sure you have some sort of stuff to keep your dog entertained while you're gone. Or maybe you're like me and you work from home and sometimes you just don't have the time to give all your attention to your dog. You want to train them to know to entertain themselves when you're busy. So I think having toys and bones is like a really, really important thing. Okay, so now that I went through the must-haves, I think I want to share five of my tips with raising my dogs that I have learned and maybe it will be helpful to you. So the first thing, which was something that I learned the hard way, would be to remember that a dog is a dog. For about maybe eight years of Money's life, I always treated her like a baby, like she was my human child. And I think that it's important to remember that your dog is a dog and they will have instincts of an animal. Um, therefore, you don't have to baby them so much. They're capable of kind of looking out for themselves. For example, when Money was younger, I would never really let her like dig and I guess like get dirty because I would basically humanize my dog, you know? I don't want her getting dirty because um, that means I have to shower her and she'll get the house dirty. But it's important for dogs to still have that instinct, you know? If your dog wants to chase after a squirrel, you know, those are things that obviously I guess you just tweak it to your life lifestyle but I feel like it's important to always remember that your dog is a dog your dog is going to want to chase after animals sometimes and your dog is going to want to dig sometimes and make a mess and that's okay because all dogs from their ancestry was bred to do a certain thing just kind of pick and choose and see what you can allow your dog to do and what you can't allow your dog to do um, but just always respect the fact that they are animals and that they are not humans. My second tip in raising a dog would be to be very, very patient. I feel like raising a dog is like raising a child sometimes. I mean, I'm sure it's a lot easier. Like, I'm sure raising a baby is like some shit, but um, you have to remember to be patient. And like a person, your dog will have mood swings, you know, your dog will change throughout the years. Sometimes money would do things that she's never done before. And I'm like, where the hell did this come from? Like, why are you doing this? You know, um, but I would always be patient and kind of look into her language. You know, we think that we know what our dog is saying, but do we really? It's important for you to sometimes take a step back from being the owner and thinking you know it all to just really listening to your dog, reading your dog's body language. Raising a dog is such a commitment. And even if your dog is doing things that you don't like, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You know, you don't love everything that your boyfriend does. You don't love everything that your mom does but you will be patient, right? And I think that the same mindset should be applied to dogs as well. They may sometimes be annoying, they may tear things up and be bad. Even if it feels like your dog doesn't respect you, I'm sure your dog does care about you. And when it's acting out, it's usually trying to tell you something. So be patient and really read your dog's body language and see what it's really trying to tell you before you jump to conclusions and think that your dog is just being bad. My third tip is so, so important and I really, really learned and I feel like this is so true when people say, always walk your dog and socialize them. It makes such a difference in the quality of their life. And for those of you who maybe have a dog that is a little more aggressive, which is money, like out of all my dogs, I would say money has the most kind of like aggression. I mean, she's never bit another dog before, but she's always quick to charge at it and like bark. But I have learned over the years that just because your dog shows signs of like aggression does not mean you need to keep your dog at home and cage it up all the time and like never bring it out. You have to socialize your dog. The more you socialize it, the better it will become. And also it just depends on how bad um, or like how 
aggressive your dog is. If it gets to a point where you can't control it, you have to get a trainer. For a while, I stopped bringing money um, out to restaurants or like out for walks and things like that where there are a lot of dogs because I'm afraid that she will bite another dog. Um, but I realized the more I was doing that, the more she became aggressive because she wasn't seeing other dogs. And anytime she saw another dog, she was just like, who the fuck are you, you know? And it's just important to always walk your dogs and socialize them. If you can't, promise your dog and give your dog socialization and take them out, you should reconsider because it's very, very important for a dog to be able to get outside and see the outdoors. Number four is something I talked about earlier and that is to set boundaries. And you just always wanna make sure that in your household with your dog, that you are the leader of the pack. And this is still something that I'm learning. I see so many people say like, oh yeah, my dog, like, oh, she just does that. But it's like unacceptable behavior. And it's just important for your dog to know and it's important for you to set your boundaries so that your dog understands that it needs to respect you whether it be i don't want my dog jumping up on my bed or like on my sofa or stealing food off of the counter you have to set those boundaries and then my last tip would be positive training i know this is a hard one because like raising a child sometimes your dog can just act out so bad that you're just like please stop it but just know that unlike a human being who can understand like that frustration dogs only feed off of that type of energy so the more i guess aggressive they're being and the more like you're yelling back they're feeding off of that energy and the more i guess like out of hand the situation becomes. I'm not a dog trainer or an expert, but this is just something I've learned and I've observed. Just make sure you're rewarding good behavior and ignoring bad behavior. All right, you guys, that is it to this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was really long. I meant for this video to just be short, simple, and sweet, but I guess there was just like a lot of stuff that I wanna talk about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I will see you guys in my next video and have a wonderful day. Bye.